chapter 4. And we're going to start at verse number 18. We're going to talk about some different guys tonight. We're going to talk about a different choice. Because like Brother Creasy said this morning, it's about your choice. It's about your commitment. I have that opportunity. So let's look at verse number 18. It says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting nets into the sea, and they were fishers, or they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately, they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. They immediately followed him. Straightway, they followed him. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for your goodness, for mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to be here. Lord, I pray, God, that you'll help me, Lord, tonight. Help me to preach this message, Lord God. Help me, Lord God, to preach it with conviction. Lord God, with your anointing, with your power, Lord God. I know it's not by my power. It's not by my mind, Lord God. But it's by your spirit, Lord God. I pray, God, that you'll open their hearts, open their minds, Lord God. Let them hear your words tonight, God. I pray, God, that you'll bless us. Lord God, give us your words, Lord God. Let us, Lord God, commit to you all that we have tonight, Lord God. In Jesus' name, we pray. If we'll give you all a hand clap tonight, and if you guys promise to get behind me, you can be seated tonight. <clears throat> talking about a commitment now that's not my title I'll give you guys my title in a minute but Peter, Andrew, James and John yeah. ordinary men right. just doing what that's right. to the ordinary men doing the same things that we know doing the same life that we know right. doing life the same as we know it I should say let me put it that way right. Right. doing life the same as we know it. Okay, working, trying to make a living right Possibly struggling to do that. Right. Can anybody hear me? Right. Okay. Going through their day-to-day -day routine. Right. Simply ordinary men. They're just ordinary men. Right. And I believe sometimes we lose sight that they were simply ordinary simple. men. It's who these guys were. They were just simply ordinary men. Thank you. Sister Creasy, that is until, right. until they had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Right. When they had an encounter with Jesus Christ, the one who could turn their lives around, right. the one who could turn their situations and their circumstances around, yeah. the one who could give them a life more abundant. Right. When they had an encounter with Jesus Christ, right. things changed. Right. Things changed. Their lives forever changed. Right. The church forever changed. Right. The day that they had an encounter with Jesus Christ, when these men yes, and the other apostles answered the call to follow me. Right. A simple... A simple call. Right. Follow, me. Follow, me. Follow me. These ordinary men became extraordinary apostles. That's right. Brother Creasy talked shortly about them this morning. These ordinary men became extraordinary apostles. Right. Preachers yes, sir. who took the message of Christ to the entire world. That's right. That's who they were. Men who through the power of the Holy Ghost right. Right. did many signs, miracles, wonders, healed the lame. Heal the sick. Right. Cleanse those with unclean spirits. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, one of them even walked on water. That's right. Come on. We forget about that. He even walked on water. Walked on Simple, water. ordinary men who answered the call to follow me. Simple, ordinary Amen. men. But when they had an encounter with Jesus, their lives became extraordinary testimonies of the mercy and the grace and the life-changing power right. Right. of God. We're talking about an encounter with Jesus. An encounter with Jesus. And that same call is going out tonight, church. Right. Right. I want you to know that same call is going out. Jesus is still standing at the door. Amen. He's still knocking. Right. And he's still asking, right. will you follow me? Right. Will you follow me? Right. Will you lay it all down? Will you leave the world and all its temporary pleasures right. to pursue the life of purpose and promise that I have for you? Right. God has a purpose and God has a promise for each and every one of you. 
Have you ever heard me say that before? I'm going to say it again. God has a purpose and he has a promise. Jesus told us that whoever will save his life shall lose it. But whoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. He shall find it. Whoever will surrender his life, give his life to me, he will find true life, abundant life. You'll find abundant life. I will give you hope. I will give you a purpose. I will give you a purpose. If you will, follow me. If you will only follow me. Christ is calling each and every one of us Thank you, Lord. Amen. to more than just some casual acquaintances with me. To more than some part-time status, to more than just some little part-time relationship with Him. He's calling us to come after Him with our entire lives. He's calling us to give Him everything we've got. And so I'm asking you tonight, this is the title of my message, Brother Mark, if you guys need a title, will you follow me? Jesus is asking tonight, will you follow me? Will you follow me? So what does it mean to follow? Let's talk about that. What does it mean to follow? We follow sports teams. We do. We follow sports teams. We follow the latest trends in clothing and shoes. Ladies, raise your hands. You do. All right. We follow the latest fads and diets and workouts. It's January. I've seen some crazy diets, Brother Chris. I've got friends that say they don't eat all day. And I said, what are you doing? I've got a four-hour window. I'm intermittent fasting. I can eat from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. What? I'm intermittent fasting. You're starving yourself is what you're doing. You can't help but lose weight. I'm intermittent fasting. I see them two weeks later, and they're just eating everything. What are you doing? Well, I'm doing the diesel physique diet now. I eat every three hours. I'm speeding up my metabolism. We follow all these diet fads. Whatever's new, whatever's whatever's convenient. I follow the little Debbie diet. Me and her, sister, Rebecca, I gotta let you know we got a thing going on. Okay? All right, me and little Debbie. Okay? But we follow all these things. We follow social media icons and celebrities. We do. We follow them to see what's going on in their lives and what are they doing today. But I want to ask you, what does it really mean to follow? What does it really mean to follow? If my favorite sports team doesn't win a national championship, it may let me down for a day or two. It really will. It may let me down for a day or two. But it doesn't alter the course of my life for the moment. It doesn't alter the, the way I live my life. Guess what? My boss does not care that the Titans didn't get a win yesterday. That's right. Not at all. Uh-huh. I better be at work tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Okay. And guess what, Brother Christy? Right. I will. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter to me. Right. It doesn't make me alter the course of my life. Right. Okay? My emotions, maybe. Okay? Yeah. But my life is not invested in that team. My emotions, maybe from time to time. But not my life, Sister Christy. Right. But what I want to ask you is, I would not, or what I want to tell you is, I would not give my life for that team. If my life, or if that team depended on my life, uh-huh. it's over with. Uh-huh. They can pack their bags up, they yeah. can all go home, right. all right, it's over. Because guess what? I'm only a fan of that team. Right. Right. When it comes down to it, I'm just a fan. Right. Okay? Right. Brother Sam, me and you used to go every Saturday to watch the Tigers play. All right? We used to walk in, first thing we did, you guys, we would go get us a bag of peanuts apiece. A Coke. Okay. We'd go find our seats and we would cheer for the Tigers. But you know what? Win or lose, did it affect our ride home? Those peanuts were good. Really. We didn't care. We had fun. Okay. But what I want to talk to you about tonight is to truly follow something is to devote your life to. Right, that's right. I'm going somewhere. That's right. To truly follow something is to devote your life to it. To devote your life to it as if it were the thing you were created for, Brother Cody. It's the thing you were created for. Right. Okay? Mr. Webster defines the word follow as this. To go, proceed, or come after. To go, to proceed, or to go, or to come after. 
It involves action. You have to commit. Right. You have to do something. Right. Okay. In order to follow something or someone, it requires you to leave the place where you are currently at right. and move. That's right. I think we talked about that a couple Sundays ago. Uh -huh. It requires you to do something. Right. Brother Mark preached to us about it. Your faith in Christ requires you to move. Right. It requires you to do something. Right. But to follow something requires you to move. It requires you to leave where you're at and to go. Now, the rest of the definition of the word follow says this. This is what I want you to hear. It says, to engage in as a call or as a way of life. Uh -huh. To engage in as a calling or a way of life. Way of life. It becomes who you are. Your calling, your reason for living, it becomes who you are. Uh -huh. It becomes your life. Uh -huh. So to truly, truly follow something, yes. it becomes your life. Right. It becomes who you are. It becomes your very identity. You. It becomes who you are. Right. So what does it really mean to follow Jesus Christ? I want to ask you that again. What does it really mean to follow Jesus Christ? It means laying down your old life of sin and selfishness. It means no longer living for the pleasures that you seek in this world. Right. Stop living for yourself is what it means. Uh -huh. or it means devoting your whole life to His will, right. His purpose, right. His plan for your life. Right. It means going after Jesus with your whole heart. Amen. Giving Him everything that you've got. Right. Not trying to have some type of casual friendship with Him, Brother Creasy, but an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. It means he becomes your identity. Right. He, become, he becomes who you are. Uh -huh. Where the Holy Ghost lives and burns and it overflows in your life and right. through your life. Right. And people can see it inside you. That's what it means to follow Jesus. Amen. That's right. what it means. So I, I want to ask you this question. Are you just a fan? Am I just a fan? Uh -huh. okay. Do I like the thought and the idea of a Savior who is there for me? Am I simply comforted by the idea that I'm okay because I did my duty and I attended service today? Right. Am I just here to be entertained? Am I just a fan of Jesus? Right. Or am I a true follower? True follower. Is he my identity? When people look at me, do they see Jesus? Right. Am I a true follower? Right. Now, continue went on with the sports analogies if you guys will let me. All right. Who in here has ever been to a sporting event and inevitably you sit beside someone. Now, a guy, let's just look at it this way. A guy brings his, his new girlfriend to the game. Or, I'm sorry, a girl brings her new boyfriend to the game. My wife, she's a big sports fan, so she knows sports. Okay? But let's just say for the sake of the, uh, uh, of the story, a guy brings his, his, his girlfriend to the game. Okay? And she knows absolutely nothing about the game. She's not a fan. She just came because he's there. And she wants to be there because he's there. Now, when they come through the gate, where does the first thing they stop at? They got to stop by the fan store, right? Because she's got to get her a sweater. And she's got to get her a ball cap, a team sweater, you know, and a team ball cap. And she might even get her a foamy finger that says, we're number one, because she's got to look the part, right? She's got to fit in with everybody else. She's got to let everybody know who she's here to root for, right? right? He's here to root for him, so she's here to root for him. Okay, so now where I'm getting at is when they get inside the, the stadium or wherever it may be, and my wife, she can tell you because we've had a few of these sit around us. When you get inside and the truth comes out, she may scream and yell. Every time the blue team scores, she knows to scream and yell, yeah, yeah. And she waves her foamy finger because all the other people wearing blue are screaming and yelling. Yeah. But then she goes, who's the guy? Boyfriend is, but that's the quarterback. Who's the guy catching the ball? That's the wide receiver. She has no clue what's really going on. But she's just in there going along with the crowd. But then they leave. And she doesn't care anymore. She may even take that foamy finger and throw it in the trash because she's not going to root for the team anymore. She was just there to be seen with him because he was there. And now she no longer cares what's going on with the blue team anymore. They're just the blue team to her. Well, church, I want to tell you much worse than this. What's much worse than going to that football game and seeing that girl that knows nothing about it is the truth that we have many Christians that come.
come inside the church doors right. every single Sunday, and they sit on the church pews, right. and they have no idea what's transpiring right in front of them. All right. They have All no right. idea what's going on. No idea. Right. No idea. They show up for the sake of showing up, Go through the motions. Look the part, Sister Priest. Right. Wave right. their foam finger in the air. I'm here. I did it. Yeah. I'm here. Right. And then they leave and they walk out the door. And nothing real ever took place in their heart. All right. Nothing real ever took That's place. Good. They never had an encounter with Jesus Christ. That's good. That's good. They never had an encounter. They never got a hold of the throne. They never found an altar. They never got a hold of Jesus Christ. Right. We'll call them fans of the church. Not true followers. We've got to be true followers, church. And I don't mean to be rude. I don't mean to Free. throw it out there, but it's the truth. Free. Come on. Free. We've seen them. We know them. They come in. They go through the motions. Right. Hopefully, I'm not one of them. But then they, there's never an encounter with Christ. To follow Christ means to devote your life to Him. It means to devote everything I've got to Him. It means to go after Him, to seek right. Him with my whole heart. Right. Every time I leave this service, I should be so stirred up that I've got to go tell the world about it. I've got to come in here and seek after him with everything I've got. Right. I've got to come after Jesus. I've got to come in here knowing that I can touch him, knowing that I can reach him, knowing that he can solve my problems, knowing that he can, he can fix whatever ails my soul, knowing that he's there for me. And then I get so consumed, so overwhelmed, so full of the Holy Ghost that when I go outside these doors, that I know, that I know that I've got to tell somebody about it, Brother Sam. Somebody's got to hear about what Jesus did for me. Somebody's got to hear about what God can do for them. Somebody's got to hear about that life saving life-altering power that Jesus has. That's the kind of Jesus I've got to get a hold of. That's the kind of Jesus that's here tonight. That's the kind of relationship that I've got to get. I've got to get a hold of God. I've got to get a hold of that power. He wants to. He wants to stir that potential that Sister Hannah talked about the other night. Right. It's in there. It's right. there. Yes. And he wants to stir. He wants to that. release it. I've got to be stirred. I've got to be stirred. So what does it look like to truly follow him? What does it look like to truly follow him? The evidence, we'll call it. What does the evidence look like? When the apostles made the decision to follow Jesus, they left behind their old life. They dropped everything. They said straightway they followed him. Yes, they laid down everything they had. Right. Everything they had that had previously defined them, Sister Elizabeth, they left it. Everything that had previously defined them, and they began walking in a brand new life. They began walking in a brand new life. We have got to let go of the past that scarred us, the past that has broken us, You're right, John. the past failures, the past that we thought defined us before. We've got to let go of those things and begin walking in a new direction. That's right. We've got to let God do what Amen. God wants to do in our lives. Yes, sir. Psalms 40 says, He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and He set my feet upon a rock, and He established my goings. God can give you a new life. He can give you a new hope. Right. He can give you a new yes, sir. beginning. Yes, sir. And he goes on to say, he put a new song in my mouth. Hey. He'll give you a new song, a new hope, a new beginning, a new reason. All right. He will give you new hope and a new purpose. A new life right. is what God will give you. Hey. Hey, if you just follow him with your whole heart, your whole soul, everything you've got. On the day of Pentecost, the crowd wanted to know, how can we have this hope? How can we have this new life, Peter? And Peter told them the Acts 2.38 message that we all can quote. But do we cling to it? He said, repent. All right. Turn from the sin of your old life. Turn away from yes, those things. Right. And be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission Thank of your you, sins. Okay? Wash the old life away. Right. Wash it away. Get rid of it. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. You'll receive power to walk through this right. new life. Right. right. You'll be given power. Power. So what does it really look like to follow? What does it really look like for the church to follow, Brother Greasy? Jesus told the apostles to go. Jesus told them to go. Go, preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. He told them to go. Go and do the work of the church. Go and do the work of the church. And church, hear me tonight. We're not here to sit idle and to get comfortable. 
We have been given an anointing and a power for a kingdom purpose. If you believe that, can you raise your hand for me? We have been given an anointing and a power for a kingdom purpose. Amen. We have, church, I promise you. And if you have the Holy Ghost living and burning inside of you, there is an anointing power on your life that hell can't stop. Right. When you realize that, when you understand that, I don't think you'll want to sit still. There is an anointing on your life that hell can't stop. Hell is not afraid of my patty cake prayers or, no, no. or my half-hearted commitment to God. It's not afraid of those things. No. But what hell is afraid of is a man or a woman that knows how to seek the face of God. A man or a woman that knows how to get their knees in prayer. A man or a woman that knows the power that's inside of them. The power that leads and guides their every single footstep. That's what scares hell. That's what frightens hell. That's what causes hell to back up out of your situation, out of your circumstances, out of your life. When hell knows what you're made of, and you know what you're made of. When you know what you're made of. Peter was so anointed. Good preacher. Peter was so anointed that the presence, or let me let me say this. Peter was so anointed, and the presence of God was so evident on his life that people believed that his shadow could heal him. Sister Teresa. He was so anointed. And the evidence that God was in his life, it was so evident on him that people believed that his shadow could heal them. Remember, we're talking about the simple, ordinary fisherman. You said this morning, they perceived he was ignorant and unlearned. But what was the difference? But what was the difference? He had been with Jesus. He had been with Jesus. People had the faith that his shadow could heal them. That was the difference. What does my walk, what does my walk say about, say to people? What does my walk with Jesus say to the people? Does my daily walk give them hope? Does it give them faith? Can I truly say that my relationship with Jesus Christ is my highest priority? That I have devoted my life to his purpose and his will for my life? Can I say that? Can I say that? The word of God already promises that nothing can separate us from God's will. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Not life. No. Not no. death. Yeah. Not height. Not death. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. But can I truly say that nothing will separate me from God? I'll let nothing come between me and God. I won't let circumstances dictate my relationship. I won't let distractions take the place of my daily commitments to God. I won't allow my past failures to keep me from my future that God has promised me. I won't let those things get in the way. I won't allow the enemy to speak doubt and fear and failure into my life anymore. Am I that committed to God that I won't allow me to get in the way of my relationship with God? God already said nothing can separate me from you. But will you allow something to separate you from God? What made Peter so different? What made Peter so different? He went from a simple fisherman to his shadow carried in a room that healed him. He gave his whole life to Jesus. That's what it is. He gave his whole life to Jesus. What will following gain be? That's what we all want to know. If I follow God, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? John 10, 10 says, I have come that they may have what? And have it more abundant. A life more abundant. King David sang praises that you have turned my morning into dancing. You have turned my morning into, you turned my life around. When I was down, when I was in despair, when my enemies were, were coming over me, you changed it. You changed everything. Jesus Christ will give you life everlasting, joy and peace on this earth, and hope and a promise of eternity with Him. That's what you get out of the deal. He gives strength in the storms of life. He moves mountains that we think are unclimbable. He just moves them out of the way. He gives power and an anointing to His people. All He requires is that we follow Him. Follow Him with our whole heart. That's all He requires is we follow Him. Stop trying to do life on your own. Stop trying to fight the battles 
on your own ability. Stop trying to carry the weight of the world on your own. Stop trying to outrun your past failures. Stop allowing them to stop your future. Stop allowing your past to get in the way of your future. Jesus says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Just come. Just come. Just follow me. Take my yoke upon you and learn, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And I shall, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is long. My burden is long. When you really, truly follow Jesus, you find hope and peace like never before. You find freedom from your past. And you find a hope and a promise of a new future. That's what you find in Jesus. You find strength for every battle that you fight. And you find the purpose for which you were created for. You find that purpose. You find everything in Jesus Christ. If you all will stand with me, the music will come. I'm closing the night. I want to ask you tonight, will you choose to follow him? Will you choose to follow him with your whole heart, with your whole soul? Not as a fan with no real life-altering commitment, but as a true follower who is completely committed and sold out that you would give your life for him, that you would give everything to him. That's what he did for you. That's how completely committed he is to you and all your flaws and all your imperfections, your inconsistencies, he's still committed to you. Nothing can separate you from his love. He deserves the very best that we can give him. Jesus said in Luke 9, 62, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. That's tough. When we read that, that's rough. But if the cares and the desires of this world are more important to you, if you miss the old life, there's something outside of Christ that keeps you from living and giving your whole life to him. If you're trying to live one foot in the world and one foot in the church, he said, you're not fit. You've got to give everything to me. You've got to give it all to me. That seems tough, but that's the commitment it really requires to follow Jesus. There is a potential stirring inside every single one of us. The potential for greatness. And church, I'm telling you, that's not hype talk. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. Jesus said, you know the works that I do. You've seen them. You've seen the works that I do. But he that believeth on me shall do greater works. You're going to do greater works. There is an anointing and a purpose on your life. And there is greater works that you're being called to. There is a greater work that you're being called to. There is greater works in your life. When I think about that, and I think about that potential, Sister Hannah, I think about God. He's up there with a giant bow, and he's just stretched it back. And you're the arrow, and he's there with all that power and all that strength, and he's giving it all that he's got. And you're the arrow, and you just won't let go, and he's just saying, if you'll just give me everything, I'll release you. I've given you something to do. I've got a target for you. I've got a, I've got a purpose. I've got it. I've given you everything. All the power is right here in me. If you'll just let go and give me everything, will you do it? Will you do it? Just give me your all. If you want it, God will send you. God will do it. God will do greater works through you. If you make up in your mind that you will follow Jesus with everything that's inside of you. So I want to ask you tonight, and these altars are open, and I pray that you come. Let's just solve it. Give a new commitment, recommitment to God. I want to ask you, will you follow him with your whole heart, your whole soul? Give him everything that you've got tonight. God's got a purpose. God's got a greater works for you. God's got greater than what you see in front of you. He's got greater works in store for you. In Jesus' name. Let's pray, church.